Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with episode two of The Amazing Quilt Tutorial. This is the final episode. I didn't have time to finish up in the last video, but I'm almost done now and I'm going to show you just, you know, a few things, I guess, things that I learned, give you my uh, tips of how to make this as easy as possible, that kind of stuff. If you're not familiar with this series, there is a playlist link down below, so please go check that out. First of all, I wanna show you that I always have a little box or a tray now for every project, and when I'm done for the night, everything gets put away, or for the day, because I need this table for other things like cutting fabric for my sails and stuff like that. And it's surprising how much you can fit in a little box, so, I just put everything away like this, and here's what I have done so far. I only have four more rows to make, and it's coming out certainly not perfect, but it really does look like a maze. So let me just put this aside, and I will uh, just chat with you a little bit as I'm finishing up these last four rows, and then I'll have the border to do, and then we'll be done. I know you can't see, but what I did is I took all my cut pieces and I separated them and they're all like on that side. And then the first thing I do, and you can tell, I scribble everything out as I go because I'm so afraid to repeat a row. The first thing I do is I go by the paper that has the sizes, not the grid, and I'm going to count how many of the path two and a half I need, the background two and a half that I need, and I'm going to just put them here. So here's my little stack, what's left, and I only have them numbered on the very top piece, and so I need one, two, three. Looks like four of these. One, two, three, and four. And then I like to do my little background two and a half. So those are the most popular. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm just going to pull the others that I need. I need a P4.5, so that's P is path. And if I have more than one, I just take from the bottom so I can have the 4.5 on one side. I need a P12.5, that's a long one. I'm down to my last one of that. I don't know if there were more, but I have one. And then I need another P6.5, and that looks like it's it for this row. Now I'm just going to set it up. So path 2.5, background 2.5, path 4.5, background 2.5, path, background, path, background, all 2.5, path, background, path, and background. I know you can't see everything. Well, you can still see for right now. Then I need my path 12.5, that's this guy, and then background 2.5. How come I don't have that? Oh, there they are. There's another one. Okay, so background. I'm working up to my sewing machine now. I'm still uh, creating my line. Okay, now I made a mistake. I need the 4.5 of the path here, so that's there. This is the 6.5 that I need now. You just gotta be careful. And then my background 2.5 and my path 2.5. Before I start sewing, I am going to check this again. I'm good. So what I'm going to do is, I do chain piecing. I did that the whole time for every row. I'm going to take these two and send them through. And then these two and send them through. These two, these two, these two. For me, it's the easiest way. If you think you'll get confused doing that, then you can just sew two, you know, uh, finger press them and put them right back down. I usually do this step right at my machine. This is the first one I sent through, so that's going to be the beginning. 
So let me just show you. I snip it. I, you know, I can go ahead and snip them all now. I just don't want to disturb the order. So let me just push these down here. And I've been putting my seam to the dark side. Now all I need to know with this first one is I need to know, did it start with a path or background? It started with the path. So this is how it goes. So this next one, I don't have to worry about does it go this way or this way. I would never be putting two backgrounds together or two paths together. It needs to alternate. So I know it goes this way. And then this guy has to go this way, that way, that way. I know you can't see everything. Hmm. I did an unusually crooked job on this one. So I'm going to just go stitch again. I kind of went off to the edge. Hang on. I don't know what happened there, but I didn't pick out the stitches. I just sewed over. Okay, that goes at the end. And then I had one little guy left all alone at the very end that didn't have a mate to go through. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to take these two pieces and you just want to make sure that you're, you know, sewing the right thing. Don't put this here and then sew here. We want a connection there. So I'm flipping it over and I grab that and I know that this is where I'm sewing. And I'll just continue. Now I have just three sections and I still have this little guy at the end. He'll get put on at some point. I just know he goes on there at the end. And once again, I'm going to do my finger pressing. And I always check to make sure I start with the path on this one. Now I know my order. I can just continue. And then my little end, I'll just put them here. One more time. These two will go together and then these two will go together with my little end attached. This is my line that I'm sewing, picking it up right there. Now I'm left with just two sections. I snipped them over there. This is what I started with. Once again, I have to make sure I check every time. I'm starting with the path, so it's going this way. And then this guy that has that little end attached, what am I doing? This way, is uh, going like, aha, see, I'm stumped. Both ends now have a path, so I had to look, and it ends with the 2.5 piece of path, so it goes this way. I only have one more place to sew, right here, and then this row will be done, right there. I have my row done. I have been making four rows at a time, and then when those four are connected, I connect it to the main quilt. So what I'm going to do first is I check this row. Look, it starts with a little two and a half inch path. It ends with a two and a half inch path. So I have to check again to make sure I have it right. Two and a half, two and a half, four and a half. Yes, that is correct. And then that long one is over there. So I'm putting a safety pin now at the top left, somewhere very close to the uh, edge where it will be caught in a seam allowance. Well, not the pin. We're not going to leave the pin there. And I'm just putting that up here. And I know I have room to do my other rows. So off camera, I am going to make the next row and then I'll show you that I'm going to connect it at that time. And I did want to mention, this is when I scribble that entire row out on both pages. Good. I am working on Z. It is hours later. Not because it took me hours to do the second row, but because I did other things. So I have this second row done, and at this point I do connect it to this guy because I don't want to take any chances with things getting twisted. I know, I double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked. This is the way it goes. So I am going to flip it up. And I immediately grab 
this end so by the time I just turn slightly and start to sew I know that I'm sewing on this side because I screwed up one time and somehow turned it and I sewed on the wrong side and that didn't work and I had to pick it all out so I'm going to go sew these two together I connected these two rows and when I come up to an intersection you know I try just for fun to get it to connect you know, not every seam has an intersection. Like, there's a seam here, but it doesn't have anything to match up to. Now, see, I must have stretched a little bit here because there's a little bit of a pucker. Not really a pucker, just a, a bump. <laughs> but this piece of background is not as wide as this piece of background. And it's just like here. This piece is wider than this. That's because my seam allowances are not consistent. As much as I try, I just don't have them consistent enough. If all my seam allowances were consistent, I wouldn't have these issues, but they're just not going to be consistent. Can I say that word any more times? And I'm just going to have to live with it, and I'm okay with it. I really am. I mean, this is a, you know, a play mat, basically, for kids on the floor that they're going to be riding little cars on or whatever. And, um... You know, it's still going to work for that purpose. So I'm putting this back on the table. My pin is still at the top left. That's there. I need to do two other rows. I'm just going to attach the third row when it's done, the fourth row when it's done. At this point, only finger pressing. When I have four together, I press that. And then when I attach it to the bigger quilt, I press that also. So let me get those two rows done and attached and the next thing will be the border and I'll be waiting until tomorrow to do that because I'm tired now so I will be back tomorrow but uh, it'll only be a split second for you it's two days later and I am back the quilt top is done except for the border I will be adding the border today but what I hoped would not happen happened I have some leftover pieces, four to be exact, a long one, two 8.5s, and a 4.5, all path. Oh, my mother's TV just went on. I don't know if that means that I cut wrong, like I cut too many, or, or if it means I made a mistake on the part that you can print out. I don't know. The quilt top came out, all the rows the same width, so it's not like I just forgot to add some pieces. I haven't been able to study the quilt top yet because it's not on the bed upstairs, but I did do the path. The path works. That's all I need to know. I'm not going to change the paper because I tend to think that I might have accidentally cut too many. For, for instance, I see that there's only supposed to be two paths that are 20.5, and I have them in the quilt, but then I have this guy, and it says two on here. So, I must have cut wrong. If you end up with leftovers, then you know that I just put some numbers wrong. I don't know. Just bear with me. I'm new to all this. So let's just uh, move along and not worry about this. The maze works, and I didn't notice anything that was wrong, so we're just going to move forward and not worry about it. Now I'm going to add the borders. I wish I had more, because I really would like a wider border. I think that would have made it look really cool. And, you know, it's not quite square, but it's, you know, not as tall as I would like. So if you do add extra border, you could even, you know, maybe at the top, make it bigger, or at the bottom. And, you know, that could be like the garage for the little cars, or where the Barbies hang out while uh, waiting for Ken to find them. <laughs> see Ken walking down the path. I'm assuming that a strip is going to be wide enough to do top and bottom. Yes, just wide enough. So I'm going to do the top and bottom first, and then I will have, ooh, one, two, three, four. I'm going to have just enough. Then I can piece some of these to do the sides. When I sew the strips on, I always just sew the strip and trim after. I don't try to match it up because, you know, this way there's room for a little bit of error. So I'm just going to trim like this. And I'm going to do that to all four corners. 
and then I'm going to add my border. Now my edge, you know, it's not perfect by any means, but I'm not going to bother to trim that. I'm just going to lay my edge down a little bit, I mean my fabric, well you know, the edge of my fabric, my strips, a little bit in so that I can just, you know, catch everything. And I'm comfortable doing that. But I will sew two strips together. I don't care where the seam lands. I'm not going to try to make it be in the center. I'm just going to sew two strips together and just go. And I'm done. Let's put it on the bed. I am totally patting myself on the back for this one. I can't believe I made this. I can't believe that I designed it. I just think it came out so good. Now, yes, the paths are not perfect. The intersections aren't matching up. I have a couple of close-ups for you to show you that. And the same for you. You're going to have crooked paths, too, and just don't worry about it. And I have a lot of flipped seams on the back because uh, probably about halfway through I was like, I give up on this. There's a lot of seams in this. It's like all seams. So whoever gets this on eBay can add some batting and a backing and nobody's going to know that there were flipped seams under there. I would have absolutely loved having this as a child. I would have entertained myself with this like forever. It would have been my go-to play mat. And as much as I love this, I have no use for it. So I am putting it on eBay, starting at a penny, free shipping for USA. Outside of USA must pay the shipping. Go check it out. If you know a child who would love this, maybe you'll want to win it for them. As for the size, mine came out about 45.5 inches wide by 59 inches tall. Again, I just think it is so cool. I like, like the bigger space right there. They could put a little house there or something. I don't know. I just, I would have so much fun with this. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want the pattern, the details are down below. Bye.